This is the Music History Today podcast for October 12th. On today's show, Faith Hill debuts, Sid Vicious gets arrested, and John Denver unfortunately passes away. First up, though, on this date in 1942, Louis Armstrong married dancer Lucille Wilson. In 1944, a near riot broke out when teenage girls refused to leave a Frank Sinatra concert at the Paramount Theater in Times Square in New York City. Police had to be called in. In 1955, Chrysler showed off the first car sound system, which was a record player that was mounted under the dashboard. It must have been pretty tough when you hit a pothole. In 1956, the rock and roll film Don't Knock the Rock premiered in movie theaters. In 1957, Little Richard said that he was through playing rock and roll and that he was turning his life over to God. He went back to playing rock and roll five years later didn't take. Speaking of Little Richard, in 1962 he met the Beatles for the first time while they both performed at a concert in England. In 1966, Jimi Hendrix formed the Jimi Hendrix Experience and on that same day the Moody Blues broke up but then reformed a month later. In 1969, the Paul is Dead conspiracy theory started in earnest in America when a man called into WKNR Radio in Detroit and told DJ Russ Gibb that if he played the song Revolution 9 backwards, the song says, Turn Me On, Dead Man. After that, the rumors kept flying. Just in case you thought conspiracy theories were something new, no. In 1972, the Billie Holiday biopic Lady Sings the Blues, starring Diana Ross and Billy Dee Williams, opened in movie theaters. In 1975, Rod Stewart played his final concert with the group The Faces. In 1978, Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols was arrested and charged with murdering his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen. We discuss more about that case and the life and death of Sid Vicious, along with other things, on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this channel by the time you're hearing this sentence. Please like, subscribe, and do all that fun stuff that the algorithm likes to tell you to do. In 1980, seven people were stabbed at a Blood, Sweat, and Tears concert in Los Angeles. In 1994, the Robert Plant Jimmy Page reunion concert Unleaded premiered on MTV. In 1995, Tupac Shakur was released from prison after death row record label head Suge Knight paid his $1.4 million bond. In 1996, the Farm Aid 9 benefit concert took place. In 2001, guitarist Wes Borland quit the band Limp Bizkit, and Natalie Cole married Bishop Kenneth H. Dupree. In 2007, Selena Gomez's TV show The Wizards of Waverly Place premiered on the Disney Channel. In 2013, 16-year-old Lord became the youngest solo singer-songwriter to hit number one on the Billboard Singles Chart when her song Royals hit the top spot. Singer JoJo still holds the record for being the youngest artist at the age of 13 to hit number one back in 2004 for the song Leave Get Out. But she didn't write the song, so that particular record still goes to Lord at the age of 16 for singer-songwriter. On that same day, by the way, Pharrell Williams married model Helen Lasicha and Matt Soren of Guns N' Roses married singer Adrian Harper. And in 2018, the movie First Man, co-starring singer Leon Bridges as Gil Scott Heron, premiered in movie theaters. In theater in 1935, the Cole Porter musical Jubilee premiered on Broadway. In 1950, the Broadway show Call Me Madam opened. In 1971, the musical Jesus Christ Superstar opened on Broadway. We discuss more about Jesus Christ Superstar also on the Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped, like I said before. And in 1980, the Broadway show Your Arms Too Short to Box with God closed. In award ceremonies that were held on October 12th, in 1981, Barbara Mandrell and George Jones were among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. And in 1987, Hank Williams Jr. was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. 
Albums that were released on October 12th include in 1968 when Aretha Franklin released Aretha in Paris. In 1973, Genesis released Selling England by the Pound. In 1974, The Who released Odds and Sods. In 1978, Shaka Khan released Shaka. In 1979, Rick James released Fire It Up and Rod Stewart released Rod Stewart's Greatest Hits Volume 1. In 1981, U2 released October. In 1984, Lloyd Cole and the Commotions released Rattlesnakes and Daryl Hall and John Oates released Big Bam Boom, which became a big hit for them. In 1987, In Excess released their biggest selling album of their band's careers, Kick. In 1989, Warren Zevon released Transverse City. In 1992, The Talking Heads released Once in a Lifetime, The Best of the Talking Heads. In 1993, Faith Hill released her debut album. Also on that same day, George Clinton released Hey Man, Smell My Finger. The Lemonheads released Come On, Feel the Lemonheads. The Common Thread, The Songs of the Eagles compilation album was released. And Elvis Costello did a twofer. He released Two and a Half Years, and Live at the El Macambo. In 1997, Midnight Oil released 20,000 Watts RSL. In 1998, Fat Boy Slim released You've Come a Long Way, Baby. In 1999, Matthew Sweet released In Reverse. Chicago released Chicago 26 Live in Concert. And Eric Clapton released Clapton Chronicles, The Best of Eric Clapton. In 2004, Chris Isaac released a Christmas album called Chris Isaac Christmas. No Doubt released Everything in Time and Alison Moyer released Voice. In 2009, Journey released Don't Stop Believing, The Best of Journey. In 2010, The Indigo Girls released Holly Happy Days and Wilson Phillips released Christmas in Harmony. Singles that were released in the UK on October 12th include in 1979 when Cool and the Gang released Ladies Night and Supertramp released Goodbye Stranger. And in 1987, George Harrison released Got My Mind Set on You. Meanwhile in America, in 1964, the Ronettes released Walking in the Rain. In 1966, the Supremes released You Keep Me Hanging On. In 1968, the Moody Blues released Ride My Seesaw. In 1979, the Human League released Empire State Human. In 1982, Don Henley released Dirty Laundry. In 1987, George Michael released Faith. In 1998, R.E.M. released Day Sleeper. In 2009, Michael Jackson's first posthumous song, This Is It, was released. In 2012, Ollie Muir's released Troublemaker. In 2017, Bazzi released Mine and Max and Harvey released Stuck on the Ceiling. And in 2018, Little Mix released Woman Like Me. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 12th include opera superstar Luciano Pavarotti, Sam Moore of Sam and Dave, Joe Oliver of Bill Haley and the Comets, Marty McGuire of The Chicks, Rick Parfit of Status Quo, Melvin Franklin of The Temptations, Jordan Pundick of Newfound Glory, Video director, Joseph Kahn. Blues guitarist, Gabrielle. Pat Denizio of the Smithereens. Artist, Jane Seabury. Tesla lead singer, Jeff Keith. David Vanian and Bryn Merrick of the group The Damned. Jazz musician, Chris Bolte. Singer and actor, Hugh Jackman. Jim Dewar of Robin Trower's band. Steve Martin Caro of The Left Bank, singer Calum Scott, James Graham of Stereo Kicks, singer Jeffrey Eli, rapper Dominic Thomas, and Young Ho of At Ease. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 12th include composer Giovanni Vitali, who passed away in 1692 at the age of 60. 
Composer James Leon passed away in 1794 at the age of 59. Composer Johann Sterkel passed away in 1817 at the age of 66. The violinist known as the Australian Paganini, Mr. William Vincent Wallace, passed away in 1865 at the age of 53. Composer Monroe Althaus passed away in 1924 at the age of 71. Composer Arthur Lurie passed away in 1966 at the age of 74. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Gene Vincent passed away from bleeding ulcers in 1971 at the age of 36. Composer Joseph Wagner passed away in 1974 at the age of 74. Also passing away in 1974 at the age of 74 was blues singer Pink Anderson. Conductor Hendrik Deals passed away in 1974 at the age of 73, not 74. Breaking the trend, Hendrik, breaking the trend. Composer Jose Contreras passed away in 1976 at the age of 82, not to be confused with the opera sensation. Opera singer, speaking of, Chris Rumer passed away in 1982 at the age of 73. Guitarist Ricky Wilson of the B-52s passed away from AIDS in 1985 at the age of 32. Pianist Blind John Davis passed away in 1985 at the age of 71. Pianist and actor Carmen Cavallero passed away from prostate cancer in 1989 at the age of 76. Guitarist Franco Luambo passed away from AIDS in 1989 at the age of 51. Cellist Eleanor Aller passed away in 1995 at the age of 78. Composer Vernon Elliott passed away in 1996 at the age of 84. Country pop singer John Denver passed away in an experimental plane accident in 1997 at the age of 53. The leader of the Ray Conniff Singers, Mr. Ray Conniff, passed away from a fall in his bathroom in 2002 at the age of 85. Dickie Peterson of Blue Cheer passed away in 2009 at the age of 63. Taz de Gregorio of the Charlie Daniels Band passed away in a car accident in 2011 at the age of 67. Organist Armin Kircher passed away from heart issues in 2015 at the age of 48. Violinist Takahisa Kosugi passed away in 2018 at the age of 80. Singer Alfonso Williams passed away in 2019 at the age of 57. Musician and composer Patty Maloney passed away in 2021 at the age of 83. And Ronald Isley of the Isley Brothers passed away in 2023 at the age of 84. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 13th, when in 1975, John Denver won an award, which upset at least one person. We'll explain on the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs>